Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, December 27th, 2020. Uh, I'm your lay reader, Zach Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found uh, in the description of this video on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, you can also head to our website, www.centralprespb.com. Look for the publications link on the top of the webpage. Scroll down until you see today's date and download and print the bulletin. Um, now that you have prepared and have the bulletin at your disposal, I ask that you pay attention to the, or bring your attention to the announcements found on the back of your bulletin. Uh, this week's announcements are, the session is working on the 2021 budget and will present it to the congregation in the coming weeks. Uh, a lessons and carol service from the PCUSA is available on our Facebook page, uh, www.facebook.com slash centralprespb. Uh, you, uh, we're asking you today to contribute to the Christmas joy offering. Uh, for more information, uh, listen to today's Minute for Mission, and also you can check out the uh, bulletin insert uh, found at the end of the bulletin. Uh, the session of CPC has decided to stick with virtual services for the foreseeable future. Keep in contact with us via social media. Look for us for username Central Prez PB, or at our website for announcements of any special services and when we plan to resume in-person worship. Archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and on YouTube. Links to each are on our website, centralprespb.com. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Rejoice in God. Marvel at all that God has done. Our eyes have seen the glory of God made known to us. For the sound of our name, for the announcements that we have found favor with God, Rejoice in God, creator of all that is life. And our eyes have seen the love of God come to us in a baby. Rejoice in God, giver of redemption and grace. Our eyes have seen God's redeeming love alive in Jesus. Rejoice in God, the spirit of peace and grace. Our eyes have seen the power of God at work in the changing world. Let us worship God together. Children of God, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before God whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and God knows everything. Please join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin in unison and then silently. Loving God, you call us to celebrate in fullness the salvation you have brought to us in Jesus, your son. You remind us through the witness of Simon and Anna that Jesus is our light and shows us your glory. Yet we hear this story as ancient and do not make it our own. O oh God, forgive us. Place your son in our arms and show us our salvation. Join our voices with those of Simeon and Anna that we may sing your praise to all who hear and be bearers of your good news. And now silently. Amen. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us now turn it over for our children's sermon to Miss Rose Von Tunglen. Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I know I did. I had a good, lots of food to eat and family and friends that visited and gave gifts. This year, though, that today I want to talk about what's coming up. As you most may know, Friday is a new year, and most of us are hoping that this new year coming in will be a whole lot better than the one we had this year. So I want to talk about promises. I'm not sure if you know what a New Year's resolution is, but it's a promise that you make to yourself. 
some of the promises that you can make to yourself or that you'll watch, watch less TV. Uh, maybe you'll wear your seatbelt every time you get in a car without being towed. That you'll be nice to others, especially your brothers or your sisters. Maybe you'll put away your toys. Now those are some things that you as a child might, do, might think could be a New Year's resolution, but adults think more on the line like lose weight, exercise more, save more money, but we can also be nicer too. But God makes promises too to us, even though sometimes we don't realize it. A promise is a promise, and one day we learned in the Bible that about a man named Simeon. And Simeon was a very old man who had waited his whole life to see the Messiah. And God promised Simeon that he would not die till he had seen the promised Messiah. So a few days after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph took him to the temple to dedicate him to God. Now Simeon was in the temple, as he always was. And when he took Jesus in his arms and praised God, saying, Lord, now let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. Now Anna, a prophet, was also in the temple, and she was always praying and worshiping there. And when she heard what Simeon said, she praised God and told everyone that Jesus was the Savior that God had promised. So as we begin a new year, Let's remember that just as God is faithful in keeping His promises, we too can be faithful in keeping our promises to others or to ourselves. Let us pray. God, just as you are faithful to keep your promises, help us to be faithful in keeping our promise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Rose, for that wonderful children's sermon. Now it's time for our Minute for Mission. Reverend Dr. Stuart N. Pattison has been living with multiple sclerosis, scoli uh, scoli scoliosis, scoliosis, excuse me, for years. As, as his health has recently forced him to retire, gifts from the Christmas Joy Offering have come to have a special meeting for him. A portion of gifts received from Presbyterians and congregations like ours go towards supporting church leaders in their times of critical financial need. This is something Reverend Pattison truly appreciates. Several years ago, he received a grant from the assistance program of the Board of Pensions and the Presbytery of Chicago. Reverend Pattinson used his grant for the purchase of a specialized scooter, which he's affectionately nicknamed de Blasi, in honor of the manufacturer. A scooter seems like a simple thing, but in fact, it was a game changer. De Blasi made it possible for him to continue his ministry as the solo pastor of the Community Presbyterian Church of Lombard, Illinois, a calling that he has answered with love for more than 20 years. Now that he is fully retired, the Board of Pensions is also providing support and assistance as Reverend Pattinson navigates the Social Security Administration system, which he says can be a very difficult process. Quote, they tell me what they need and they just kind of get the job done, end quote, he explains. Quote, to just know you have someone there to help you navigate all the red tape is so helpful. Reverend Pattinson offers an important perspective for us to think about in dealing with the many challenges of things like the COVID-19 virus. For lots of people, the virus was a temporary stay-at-home thing, he says. A disability can also be a stay-at-home thing, sometimes a permanent stay-at-home thing if you don't have anywhere to turn for help. What the Board of Pensions does is really important to me and others like me so that we can carry on even with our disabilities. They've helped in ways that have opened up my life. Reverend Pattinson wants everyone to know how much it means to have the support of the Board of Pensions in his life and in the lives of other retirees and church leaders who need a helping hand. I'm grateful for those who give to this offering, he said. If Reverend Patton Pattinson was with us here today, I'm sure he would be nodding in agreement when I say that when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Please give generously. Let us pray. O oh God of hope and healing, scoot us into places where our hands can help and we can be places where our, your healing and your hope are shared. Amen. 
For more information about donating to the Christmas Joy offering, uh, check out the uh, bulletin insert of our bulletin. You can also um, head to our website, uh, www.centralprespb.com, where we'll have more information and uh, links to donate. Now let's go ahead and turn it over to Reverend Tim Reeves for this week's sermon, A Season of Amazement. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading this morning is the 148th Psalm. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. And we turn now to our second reading from the second chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, beginning with verse 22 and proceeding through verse 40. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him to, up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents <clears throat> brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. 
at that moment, <clears throat> she came and began to praise God. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. And began to praise God. <clears throat> and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel, of Jerusalem. And when they had finished, <clears throat> they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. How ironic. Our culture has been geared up for Christmas since Halloween. But just when we in the church have gone through the disciplined waiting of Advent and are now ready to celebrate the birth of our Savior, our culture is telling us that it's over and done with. But it's not over and done with. Somehow we tend to forget that. Now it seems that everyone is settling into the winter doldrums, Everyone's ready to get back to business as usual, as if any of us could ever go back to business as usual after hearing the grand and joyful announcement that to us has been born in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Christmas is a season that lasts through the Feast of Epiphany on January 6th, and in spite of the fact that our culture is ready to move on, we recognize that this is still a season of wonder, a season of hope, a season of joy, and a season of amazement. This is a season when all of creation is called upon to join in praise of our Creator. The 148th Psalm we read this morning puts it this way, Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. And in our reading from Luke this morning, Simeon and Anna join their voices to that chorus of praise. Why not? They had been waiting a long, long time to catch a glimpse of God's salvation and the redemption of Jerusalem. How could such joy and amazement be contained in just one day or one moment or even one lifetime? So I echo the words of a fellow Presbyterian, a poet by the name of Ann Weems, who wrote later, after the angels, after the stable, after the child, they went back, as we always must, back to the world that doesn't understand our talk of angels and stars, and especially not the child. We go back complaining that it doesn't last. They went back singing praises to God. We do have to go back, but we can still sing 
our alleluias. We can still sing our alleluias. We can express our joy and amazement. And we must, because our Savior is one who continues to amaze us. He certainly continued to amaze his parents. And let's face it, there is much about a baby, any baby, that is amazing to say the least. I have watched with awe and wonder as a baby cooed or smiled or wrapped a tiny hand around a finger. And I don't doubt for one moment that Mary and Joseph experienced similar feelings. But Jesus was no ordinary baby. Everything from his conception to his birth, complete with angel choirs and visiting shepherds, was nothing short of amazing. Even his presentation in the temple, an event so commonplace among the people of Israel that it normally would not have merited any notice whatsoever, became a moment when Israel came face to face with the amazing and awe-inspiring revelation of God. Because out of the blue, as it were, Simeon appears on the scene and takes Jesus in his arm and says, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all your peoples. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And though Luke says this was hardly a coincidental meeting because Simeon was led to Mary and Joseph by the Holy Spirit, Simeon's words must have come as quite a surprise to both Mary and Joseph because Luke goes on to report that they were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. It could be that they were surprised that a complete stranger recognized this tiny miracle that was in every sense imaginable, heaven sent. But I think something even more amazing was being revealed to them. Because as Simeon points out, this child would be a light for revelation to the Gentiles. Now, that may not seem like a very important detail to any of us, but it would have struck like a thunderbolt in Jesus' day. Because while it was a common experience for the people of Israel to look for the Messiah, it was unheard of to think of this Messiah as anything but a gift to the people of Israel. And to think that this Messiah would include everyone else would have been astounding. But that's exactly what Jesus would grow up to do in his life, his ministry, and his death and resurrection. He reached out to people on the margins, people who typically were left out, who were considered unclean or unrighteous. And in every way imaginable, unwelcome. He would meet opposition from the religious leaders of his day for doing what they themselves did not, reaching out to the lowest of the low. But it is amazing that he continues to meet opposition from us in the church, which bears his name some 2,000 years after the fact because our Lord continues to lead us to the margins where people are left out and considered unclean, unrighteous, and unwelcome. And many in the church still resist because it calls us away from the staid and familiar, the safe and the comfortable. But for Jesus, relationships always superseded rules. That's not to say that the law was unimportant 
Indeed, by relating this story of his presentation in the temple, Luke goes to great lengths to show us that Jesus was brought up to abide by all of the law of God. Oftentimes, however, he refused to let the letter of the law inhibit him from relating to others in their need. But we in the church today are often just the opposite. How many times have people in the church said something to the effect, if you want to be part of our fellowship, then you must do so on our terms. Before you can join us, you must get right with God as if that's even possible for us to do. God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world to himself, not we in Christ Jesus reconciling or getting ourselves right with God. Too often in our own lives, we seek to define the gift of Jesus Christ instead of letting that gift define us. We forget that love and grace that he extended freely to us, he extends freely to all. We delude ourselves into thinking that we are somehow entitled to this gift more than anyone else. We lose that sense of wonder and amazement at the fact that not only can God, but also that God does graciously accept us. And so, tragically, throughout the Church of Jesus Christ, there have been disputes about how one denomination relates to another. There are disputes within denominations about how the Church will or won't relate to women, or foreigners, or different races, or homosexuals, or anyone else as desperately need of, in need of salvation as we ourselves are. Isn't it amazing that the gift of Jesus Christ is offered to every single person? Think about that. God doesn't say, I'm going to give my son to this group, but not that group. To those who are more righteous, over those who have never darkened the door of a church. God gives his son to everyone. And that's why we sing our alleluias. That's why we join in creation's chorus of praise to God. Because far from being a time when we experience a letdown, these are meant to be the days when the good news of great joy is just beginning to be told. Unto us is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Of course, if Jesus' parents were amazed to hear Simeon's particular revelation, then they were likely equally amazed to hear what Simeon would go on to say. That Jesus would be destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And then he turns and looks at Mary and says, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Now we should note that nothing up to this point in Luke's narrative would have prepared Mary and Joseph for the fact that this baby that they would hold in their arms would meet any opposition. But the good news of God's gift would not be greeted as good news by everyone. Instead of singing praise to God, more than a few mouths will be clamped shut. Not everyone wants to sing praise for this news. Not those who prosper by others' poverty nor those who prefer crooked paths to straight ones. Those who love the dark world just as it is will rage at the new fanfare and chief among the dissenters will be the rulers of the earth. Imagine what this world would be like if our rulers 
our leaders, those we have elected and put into positions of power, were to use that power not for their own selfish ends and to reward their own cronies, regardless of how many laws they've broken, but actually use that power to serve others for the good of others. Be it Herod and Caesar then, or presidents and prime ministers today, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords encounters opposition from any and all with a vested interest in maintaining their stranglehold on power. And so, by the way, does the church. But what I find so amazing is the fact that in spite of such opposition, our Lord continues to offer himself, and Christians all over the world continue to engage in selfless and even heroic acts of service and love. Why is that? Perhaps it's because we have never lost our sense of amazement. To quote Anne Weems again, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. The Lord gave the peoples of the earth a garden, and the people said, that's very nice, God, but that's not enough. We'd like a little knowledge, please. So the Lord gave them knowledge, and the people said, now that we have knowledge, we'd like things. And the Lord God gave the people things, but they always said, that's not quite enough. So the Lord gave them gifts unequaled, the sun, lightning and thunder, rain and flowers, animals and birds and fish, trees and stars and the moon. God gave them the rainbow and parted the Red Sea and gave them manna. God gave them the prophets and children and each other, but still people said that's not quite enough. God loved the people, and out of ultimate merciful goodness, God gave them the gift of gifts, a present never to be forgotten. God gave them love in the form of God's Son. There are some that don't open their eyes or their ears or their hearts, and they still say that's not quite enough. They wander through the stores looking for Christmas as if it can be found on the shelves. But others open their whole being to the Lord, bending their knees to praise God, carrying Christmas with them every day. And for these, the whole world is a gift. Doesn't that sum up this season of amazement rather beautifully? The whole world is a gift. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings. Uh, if you head to our website, www.centralpresspb.com, you can find a Donate Now link on the top right-hand side of the page. Uh, if you click that link, you can give electronically. If you prefer to mail a, a, a tithe in, you can, our address is 6300-6300, Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. We appreciate your, kind and give, uh, your kindness and giving. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. 
but we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when, at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns, which there are many. Um, first off, let us uh, we definitely need to say a prayer for those who are injured uh, in the blast in, um, in Nashville. Um, at the time of this recording, um, I know that they're, uh, the, the police are investigating and they did find um, someone has passed from that event. Um, beyond that, there's not much to, uh, to report. Uh, but we definitely want to keep that community and the country in our prayers at this time. Uh, we also want to uh, keep those. Um, uh, Rosie Charles, is, uh, who is our janitor, uh, her brother has lost his battle with COVID. So we want to uh, definitely keep uh, Rosie's family in our prayers at this time. Um, we also want to continue to keep um, Haley Chandler, who um, begins her, um, her cancer treatments. Uh, this coming week. We pray that, that she receives healing uh, with the uh, least amount of invasiveness and the uh, side effects that uh, those treatments can bring to people. Um, our community lost uh, uh, several members, uh, a couple of members who um, uh, recently, um, Gerald Hill, who is the father of a close friend of Laura and uh, mine, Jennifer Place, um, he passed unexpectedly this past week uh, before Christmas. Um, Mr. Hill was laid to rest uh, yesterday, um, and um, we are continuing to hold uh, Mr. Hill's family in our prayers. Um, also, uh, a friend of, of the Cosmer families um, uh, lost a um, matriarch, um, Charlotte Munson. Um, Char uh, Charlotte's uh, son, um, I'm, uh, I used to work with his, um, his wife. I also used to work with a, another son of Ms. Munson's and uh, Ms. Munson's daughter, and, um, brought her twin children to, uh, Nina's daycare. So we are, um, know Ms. Munson, um, several different ways. Um, I know that they're all very strong at the loss of Ms. Munson. Um, we also, uh, so we want to definitely keep the family in our prayers. Um, we all, also, my uh, co-worker, uh, Johnny Took, uh, lost his mother um, to Parkinson's disease, I believe, um, a week or so ago. Um, I forgot to mention him last week, and I definitely want to uh, keep um, his family in our prayers as well. Uh, we also want to uh, keep... Um, all of those who are battling the COVID-19 virus in our prayers. Uh, we pray for speedy uh, delivery of the vaccine uh, so we can get this um, pandemic under control and um, get back to uh, what normal is going to look like in the future. Um, hopefully we can get back to um, this, the, 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 the in-person worship as the, vi the um, vaccine goes out. Uh, the more people who take it, the, the quicker we're going to get back to um, to in-person worship. So we definitely want to pray for a speedy delivery of that vaccine. We also want to keep continue to keep those who are affected by the virus who have been infected and also those families who have lost loved ones like uh, Ms. Charles's brother uh, in our prayers. Um, please allow the Lord to bless those families and let them uh, have comfort in their grief in these days. We also ask for protection from our first line responders, our medical professionals, our retail workers, and our um, and our um, first responders, our police, fire, um, correctional officers. Um, please keep them in your care and protect them from uh, contracting this disease. And if they do, please can uh, please grant uh, uh, speedy recovery and no long term uh, effects from this. Uh, this horrible disease. Um, let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, be with those families who have lost loved ones in these last few days. Uh, the family of Johnny Took, uh, his mother who passed, their family members, uh, Mr. Hill's family members, including Jennifer Place, and the family members of uh, Miss Charles's uh, brother who lost his battle with COVID, and those uh, members of the family of Miss Charlotte Munson. Uh, we want to continue to hold um, Haley Chandler in your caring. Uh, please grant the doctors and the nurses the wisdom to uh, make the right decisions in her care for her cancer diagnosis, and please allow her to be healed completely in, in, a, in a quick recovery, and we want her to uh, experience the least amount of side effects from these treatments as possible. Please keep her from harm as best you can. Uh, we know that you are the healer and that you are the giver of all things to us. And then we pray that you bless Haley in, her, in the coming days from her uh, uh, with her treatments. Uh, we wanna continue to keep the city of Nashville in our prayers um, and your caring. We, we pray that those that community um, heals from the um, the event that occurred on Christmas morning. Uh, we want to continue to uh, keep those who are dealing with the pandemic, uh, those who have lost loved ones, those who are dealing with a, a diagnosis, and those who are uh, those who are on the front lines and in, in danger of being infected in uh, your caring. Uh, we, we thank you for the, the, the approval of the vaccine, and we uh, thank you for a speedy delivery of those vaccines to our frontline workers and eventually to the rest of us. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord, thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.